Hi everyone, my name is Marink Spasovic and in this video I will show you how to use fluent expressions while writing tests in .NET. Yeah, we are all aware of the recent events with the fluent assertions library and no, I will not use that one here. In this video I will talk about the great alternative library named Shouldly. You will see how to use it with different testing scenarios and how to improve your testing code especially if you didn't use any fluent code for your tests. As usual, if you like the video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps me a lot and supports this channel as well. That said, let's continue with the video. So, why should we use shouldly? Let's start with one of the most important properties of testing, which is readability. We should care about readability because tests are part of our software documentation. If a test immediately conveys its purpose, Whoever uses the test component will easily understand how to work with it. Shouldly improves the assertion's readability thanks to a fluent interface. For example, this is how we would compare two numbers using the XUnit framework. Here, I have the test class created and a simple method, which will serve the purpose for now. So, inside the test method, I can create a result variable with a value of 2. And then, if I want to check if some other number is equal to the result, I can use the assert class and the equal method and provide the required arguments. In the same way, I can check if the expression is true. And let's provide the expression here. Now, this code is perfectly fine, don't get me wrong here, but we can provide more readability with the usage of the fluent interface. So for that, I have to install the Shouldly package. After the installation, I can be more expressive by using the result variable and state that it should be 2 or that it should be less than 5. So this is a very simple example. But the second approach is clearer at first glance. Shouldly has many other fluent assertions that make assertions much more powerful and compact. This is accomplished with generic and ad hoc extension methods that Shouldly implements. It also improves the error messages. For example, let's remove the equal and should be methods, hide this expression, and modify the result to 6. And now, I will run the test. Well, we see the test fails, and if I navigate to the test itself and inspect the message, we can see this. But now, if I hide the first assertion, uncomment the second one, and run the test again, we see again the test fails, but this time the message is more descriptive. Ok, with these initial examples, we saw some overall advantages of using Shirley in our tests. But now, let's see some more examples. At this point, I would like to let you know about our online courses. As you can see, we have just published our new Web API course in addition to our microservices and Blazor WebAssembly courses. So feel free to check out our new platform and all the courses there. Ok, to continue, let me show you that I already have the book class prepared. And here, you can see a few methods to extract a bag of words as a dictionary, to publish a new edition, add a new author, and add a chapter. Of course, these are all dummy examples, but they will serve the purpose of this video. So, let's first test the new edition method, which only increases the edition by one. In the testing class, I will remove the body of the testing method, Let's rename the method to adjust it according to the testing rules and then add some code inside it. I will create a new book first and provide the title, some text and a single author as arguments. Then since we will test the addition number, inside the old addition variable, I will store the current book's addition. Next. I can execute the method from the book class to publish a new edition. And then 
I can verify that the new book edition should be increased by 1. This is pretty straightforward. On the other hand, using the XUnit way, the code would look like this. Now, let's just hide this one. Of course, I can't show all the shortly functionalities and methods in a single video, but they have rich documentation where you can find all the extension methods and their purpose. For example, for this int type, you can see there are a lot of fluent methods we can use. You will find the documentation link in the description below. Okay, now in the book class, we have the add author method and we have two paths in that method. So we can test both. That said, let's create a new test method in the testing class. And then we can add the code inside it. So again, let me just create a new book. And since the code is the same, I will simply copy and paste this line. Then let's add a new author named author2. And finally, I'll state that the author's property should contain the added author. Trying to do the same with XUnit would require a lot more code and effort. Additionally, I can test if I have a duplicate in the collection. So let's again add a new method here with an appropriate name and then create a new book. As you can see, I could have extracted this book creation line into a new method, but let it stay for now like this. Now, if the method I test here finds a duplicate in the list, it will throw an exception. So let's write the assertion code for that. I will use the should and then call throw and provide the type of exception. This method accepts an action delegate as a parameter, so let's provide one here and execute the method with the author1 as an argument. Of course, I can run the tests and you see they all pass. Great. Another method I want to test is the add chapter1. Since I'm adding a simple new line as the text at the end of the string property, I can test that. So I will add a familiar code here. Then I will call the add chapter method and pass a string as an argument. And then I can use the book and the text property, which is of type string, and then use one of many extension methods I have at my disposal. You can see a lot of should methods. And for this one, I will use the should and with method and provide the same argument. Additionally, I didn't mention that all the previously used, and I believe all the methods we can use, have an overload to add a custom message. If you pass the custom message argument as well, this message will appear as an additional info section of the full message if the test fails. Okay, I have one last method in the book class. The BOE or bag of words consists of a dictionary where the keys are the words of a text and the values are the repeat occurrences of the same word. So let's go to the test class and add a new method. I do the same thing again, of course with a different method name, and then create a bag of words variable and execute the get bag of words method. Then I can use my dictionary and call the should contain key and value method and provide the key and the value. I can repeat the same code here, just the word will be word2 and the value is 1. So you can see how dictionaries can be tested, but I can improve this test even further with soft assertions. Soft assertions are different from hard assertions. They are often used because they do not immediately throw an exception when an assertion fails. Instead, they wait until all the assertions results are available, then they show us the exceptions, if any. For example, if in this method the assertions were changed like this, the test would throw an exception after the first assertion because these are hard assertions. The problem is that we don't see the result on the second assertion. 
which might still fail even after we fix the first one. In general, when we have multiple assertions in tests, we should convert them to soft assertions. So, let's cut these two BOV assertion lines and then remove the BOV variable and call the should satisfy all conditions method. Then, as an argument, I can paste the previous two lines, add the BOV variable for each line, fix this at the end, and add the number 2 here. Now, both assertions will fail. And the error message will summarize both messages for us. Excellent. Of course, if you check the documentation, you will see a lot more types extended, and even dynamic types can be tested with the dynamic shoot class, and of course, the set of methods we can use. Lastly, let me show you how to assert that our code runs within a certain period. So, again, I will add a new method here and generate a new book, but then I will use the should complete in method and provide an action delegate here, where I will call the method I want to test, in this case the get bag of words method, and then pass the value for the timeout parameter, in this case a value of 5 seconds. Of course the get bag of words method will finish a lot faster than this, but if for some reason it takes longer, the test will fail. Great. Well, as you've seen, Shuli can certainly improve the readability of our tests and the error messages we receive. It can do even more than what we've seen, and the documentation shows several examples of all the methods available. With that in mind, if you liked the video and found it useful, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and the bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for new ones to come. Until then, all the best.